you're familiar with the BP facility in Maryland that closed down. What did you see? What went wrong there? We certainly uh, appreciated the fact that they, uh, 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 after purchasing Amico, bought the SolarX plant up there. And my students and I have toured it at least three times in the last 15 years. And uh, that was always a great opportunity. Uh, we did see that there were a f at least a few anomalies of uh, environmental management system uh, potential problems there. Uh, leaks, uh, spills, uh, uh, some smells, and anytime you see any of that, that, that that's a, sort of a, a signal that there are some inefficiencies, at least in the environmental management uh, system. Uh, of course, uh, it, it could be much, much bigger picture economic reasons for why BP uh, made that disinvestment decision. Um, one is that, of course, they found other places that they could invest for the same purpose and invest in both India and in Mexico for some of the same technologies. Another is that perhaps even though they were in solar photovoltaics and uh, uh, looking at a particular kind of technology, uh, multi-crystalline, um, they didn't have exactly the same uh, uh, thickness of their product as most of the rest of the industry. And so they were sort of uh, kind of one-off or out, out of the general mainstream of uh, multi-crystalline uh, solar photovoltaics manufacturing anyway. I did notice from the different times that uh, we visited uh, that plant uh, an increasing amount of uh, robotization. Uh, the last time we visited there probably about uh, four or five years ago, uh, while all of the managers, all the technicians, very competent, very enthusiastic about solar photovoltaics, uh, first of all, they often expressed some uh, 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 disenchantment with the amount of investment that BP was making overall. But to be honest, the same people had the same problems with Amico uh, years before that. Obviously, we all are really you know, interested in wanting to advance solar photovoltaics as soon as possible. Uh, and, and as widely as possible. So uh, there's that, but um, the, what we saw was that uh, there were only about a dozen people that we could actually identify besides the technicians and the managers that we were talking to throughout the rest of the plant. It was that roboticized. Now compare that to previous uh, years that we toured there, uh, far, far more uh, robotics and far fewer people most recently. Comparing that to their, the BP Tata solar plant outside of Bangalore in India uh, is a huge contrast. In each room, there were at least 10 to 12 people uh, at the BP Tata solar plant in India. So obviously there is something going on here regarding labor costs, availability of skilled labor perhaps, and the, just the amount of uh, uh, automation that is possible even in a highly uh, high tech area like solar photovoltaics. Uh, we were told uh, almost e e with each tour that one of the main uh, markets for uh, solar PV uh, sold by BP Solar was Japan. And as we all know, Japan has had some rocky both economic and political times in the last decade here. So it's possible that uh, the Japanese market may not have been quite as responsive uh, as uh, BP had projected. And the latest recession, the worldwide recession, and the advancement of solar PV, both in that technology and many other technologies, has improved so much uh, over the past several years. And the latest recession has dropped the price of what any uh, manufacturer, whether it's BP or others, could sell their uh, product for. And so usually, the, 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 uh, most often now, the price is about half of what they could have gotten just a few years ago. So you could have you know, continuing cost factors there. You could have uh, uh, labor being cheaper elsewhere and a drop in revenue all combining, perhaps with the problems in the environmental management system, uh, combining to make it not such a great investment for at least uh, BP Solar there in Frederick. One aspect to this is creating these green manufacturing jobs. Another challenge altogether is actually keeping them in place. Certainly one of the main things to do is to make sure that you're manufacturing the right kinds of green products or involved in green service uh, delivery. Uh, and that means uh, having done a really good job of environmental scanning, that is scanning the business environment, locally, nationally, internationally, identifying what kinds of uh, products you want to be making 
that have a real uh, potential for being marketed, as I said, in, at a, all three of these levels, local, national, and international. So an environmental scanning approach and, and putting time and, 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 and effort into really making sure that we've done a really good job of identifying the sort of the, the winning technologies and then some of those that might be following it. One of the key features, for instance, of a couple of non-US uh, car, car manufacturers, uh, the top two, uh, uh, is that they have two, three, and four technologies deep ready for different car technologies to come forward and them to capture various kinds of environmental and economic benefits. So you can't just look at the very the, the next product or, or service, but make sure that you've identified a full stream of what might be coming along in the future. One of the ways to do that, of course, is to connect with uh, uh, academics, uh, myself at George Washington University, but here in the Washington DC area, we have a full consortium of 17 other colleges and universities. And most of what academics do is look back and look ahead, okay? Historical and, and project. And so identifying which ones can, uh, can participate and provide you with good uh, information about what's coming next. Um, and then to also connect with organizations like the World uh, Resources Institute, which is just a block away from here, and many other NGOs, same kind of thing. In fact, it was WRI, one of our partners for a number of different projects at GW, that uh, identified this full stream of technologies that some uh, international car companies have ready to go and is a real uh, uh, factor in their overall short and long-term success. The, the uh, big factor, of course, uh, in addition to making sure you sort of pick winners for the products and services, is to make sure that you can attract uh, employees uh, at, at a price that you can afford to pay uh, that have the skills to, uh, once again, not only produce what you're making today, but are ready and can be trained for producing uh, successful products in the future. Um, one big factor is to kind of widen out the I identification of what manufacturing means. It certainly could go upstream into research and development, for instance, and connect to the upstream parts of your business. And your manufacturing uh, um, operation can also connect to the downstream side of uh, distribution, uh, construction, uh, uh, marketing. Okay, and so to expand that out and make sure that you've got really good connections to the upstream and the downstream, two areas, by the way, where at least Americans in general, the American economy really uh, excels, so research and development and sales, marketing, distribution, uh, is another factor is that sort of you broaden out the idea of what's a manufacturing job. There are many, many people that work for major organizations that connect these different functions in an organization. There are also individuals, boundary spanners, we sometimes call them in academia, that connect with customers and suppliers. Customers on the downstream side, suppliers on the upstream side. Always being in touch with what it is they can do, what they can handle, and identify the, in this case, sustainability features of both your suppliers and your customers. So those are some ways to actually get and keep uh, manufacturing jobs. The uh, really big thing is to uh, make sure that you segment manufacturing into light, medium, and heavy, okay? And it may be that in the U.S. here, we're not going to be uh, ex excellent at all three areas, okay? That we can identify that, for instance, light manufacturing may be more appropriate in some places uh, for the skill level that we have and for the uh, competitive edge that can be developed, okay? So to segment manufacturing is another way to do it. The really big thing about manufacturing is related to sustainability. It certainly is connected to the four areas, four main areas of sustainability. Energy, water, waste, and health, okay? And safety. Uh, the, uh, to, to be excellent at each of those areas, or to at least identify partners that can, uh, can help you become excellent in each of those areas, gets you cost savings, gets you, uh, keeps you out of court, uh, maybe even if you identify some really unique features and niche markets can increase your revenue, either price or volume. And so that's another way to actually attract and keep uh, manufacturing jobs. Dr. Mark Sterick with George Washington University, thanks again for taking time with us this morning. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure.